Is AI outsmarting us? Is it going to take our jobs? Is it going to replace us? Will it outsmart us? What is it going to do to a lot of different industries? It is an easy thing to be scared about. The big part of marketing is to stand out through a bunch of different ways. And AI is going to bring us all to the middle. And you can 100% tell that it's AI generated. Uniqueness is what drives our interest in things. And AI will continue to help more and more and more, but it will not replace it. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Frustrated by Your Marketing podcast. I'm your host, Jim D'Amico. I'm joined by my co-host, Madison McQuistian, and this is episode 11. We're, it's been a couple of weeks, and that is because, as you, if you listen to the episode on podcast marketing, I talked about how long these episodes take to create. Yeah, uh, they've been getting the, so long. Beyond, you know, it, even beyond just how long the episodes are. Um, all the stuff that goes behind it in the creation of the video and the marketing uh, for the video. So we're going to try something else. We're going to try doing some shorter episodes, which this is going to be one of them. And uh, we'll intermix them with some longer episodes. And we're, we're just, you know, we're figuring this out. We're experimenting and it's been a lot of fun. So, hey, it fits with our podcast name perfectly because, you know, when you get frustrated <laughs> by your marketing, sometimes you have to try something different. That's right. And yeah, this has been a, uh, a big experiment for us. And in more ways than one, we're experimenting with the length, we're experimenting with guests, we're experimenting with how we're advertising it. And yeah, so this is a different one. And so this episode was inspired by our summer intern, Olivia, uh, who's been with us for about a month and she's been great to have on the team. And I had her listen to the podcast and I think she's listened to almost all the episodes and uh, we talked about it uh, at length. And her question to me was, is AI outsmarting us or will it outsmart us? So I want to talk about that a little bit. And what what I think about that. So before I do that, though, I do have a prediction. So my kids, if you're you're born after 20, 2015, I think it is, you're going to be called Gen Alpha. And I have a prediction that in the next year or so, that will be renamed uh, to Gen AI as of uh, how so big of crazy. a deal how big of a deal AI is in our society. The millennials were really Gen Y, but because of Millennium, they were renamed uh, to the millennials. And so I have a feeling that they'll be called the, either the AI generation or generation AI because it is so ever present and it's scary. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Olivia is asking this question shows how scary it can be. Is it going to take our jobs? Is it going to replace us? Will it outsmart us? And that's like the main question for a lot of people right now is what is it going to do to a lot of different industries if you're in that job field? Right. I mean, I read posts about it. Uh, on an almost daily basis from people in, in marketing and just in other industries uh, scared that they're going to lose their jobs and, and how, you know, you know, I shouldn't be a designer anymore. I shouldn't be a writer anymore. And it is an easy thing to be scared about, but I don't think it's going to replace your jobs. I don't think it's going to outsmart us. Uh, you have to remember that uh, generative AI, which is what we're using in ChatGPT and BARD and, and all of those different sources is just a regurgitation in an intelligent language model of what we've already written and what we've already produced. So not creating, it's not, you know, it's not intelligent. Uh, it feels intelligent. It's artificially intelligent, right? It's regurgitating R. So imagine it being, you know, and it makes mistakes like this, but imagine it being your best research assistant possible. And it's culling through, you know, you know all that data out there um, that has been fed into it. And it's recreating stuff. It still can make mistakes. If we made a mistake, the mistake mm-hmm. continues. So it's not like it knows. It do, it doesn't understand industries. It's just taking what industries have said and it it sort of you know repurposes that. So anyway, so that's the question. And my take on it is that the analogy would be kind of like a calculator. So when when we were in school um, before, we all have a calculator in our pocket at all time now. With our phones, it was always the you know some some kid would always say, "Why do I have to learn this? I can just use a calculator." Um, at that time, it was a separate device. Now it really is with us all the time. But the reason why, and what teachers would say, or what they should have said, is if you don't learn the basis behind the math, you can't use the calculator well. Maybe you sort of can for addition, but once you get into more complex math problems, if you don't understand the basis behind it, you can't use it. Yeah, and I'm same- terrible at math, so. <laughs> But you, but you learned enough to use a calculator, is my guess. For the most part, you can probably figure out a tip. You can probably figure out percentage rates, interest rates. 
and things like that. And, and if you didn't learn the thing behind it, again, the calculator has a percentage tool, but if you don't understand what a percentage means, yep. you can't use it. And if you don't understand, or at least understand what to ask. So in the case of ChatGPT, you have to ask it something intelligent. You have to understand what to ask it. Otherwise, it's just going to guess. And a lot of times if you ask it the wrong thing. It's really wrong. It, you know, sometimes you could ask it the right thing and it's wrong, but it's really wrong. So you have to guide it um, like you would an intern or an assistant, that, that amazing research assistant. Like, so if you just said, go research stuff on marketing, okay, they're not, you have to get, you know, on marketing for this specific industry, for this specific topic, for these dates, for this region, for this state, for the city, whatever, you know, whatever you want, you've got to, you know, guide it and, and also give it that specific direction. Otherwise it's going to come back with something either wrong or way off topic. And that's the important part. So like a calculator, you have to understand the math behind it. And with ChatGPT, you have to understand the design behind it. I mean, ChatGPT doesn't do design, but there are all those AI design programs. Photoshop just add one. If you don't yeah. know good design, you can't use it uh, or you can't use it well or wisely. For writing, if you don't understand what sounds good, you can't use it well. I know you've, you've used it a ton for reviews and it's never perfect. Right. Yeah. And I've actually gotten to use both like AI images. I've messed around with that a little bit, but also obviously AI writing with chat GPT because I answer reviews for so many different restaurants, but I have especially noticed now that I've used it more often, it definitely sounds robotic to me. So obviously like I'll have a really long one star review of someone just ranting about something that went on at this restaurant. And sometimes it can be really hard to figure out how to answer those certain reviews um, if like the response is just like so long. And so if you put it into chat GPT, it'll like spit something out. So I'll say, give me a two sentence response to this review and it'll give me a couple sentences. And I still notice that it doesn't really sound like it has that personal touch from an actual person. Um, but if you haven't used it, it could sound totally normal. But to me, I don't feel like it does. So I'll take a little bit of what chat GPT recommends and then kind of like do my own spin on it. And and the reason that you're able to use that tool then is because you've written before, like you're, you're a writer, you, you know, yeah. in marketing, not, it's not your main job, but it's something that you've done probably in every product. There's been some sort of writing component. It's always there. And you re answered reviews without it for almost a year, I think. Yeah. So yep. You understand, and you understand marketing. So if you didn't understand marketing, if you didn't understand restaurants, if you didn't understand reviews, if you didn't understand writing, you would say, write this review, be like, this is great. And it would sound terrible and it would sound ungenuine, which is you know, really mm -hmm. what reviews are all about. Like you're getting a genuine, res you know, oftentimes um, they're either very ecstatic or very angry yes, response for sure. and you need to respond in kind. And so if it was the same type of response always, they would quickly realize that the restaurant didn't care. And that's why the restaurants sh should respond. We cover that in the review episode, but it's all about showing that you care about what the customer says. And if you showed a lack of that with just using the auto response, you would, you know, it wouldn't, you might as well not respond at all at that point. Yeah. And even with normal content writing right now, a lot of people who are writers are freaked out that AI and chat GPT and things like that are going to overtake that industry. But it's the same thing. It's like you still don't have that personal touch. It does sound very robo robotic. So for like blog posts and things like that, a lot of times those are like statistics and you're just kind of going through telling people something about a topic, which I feel like chat GPT kind of does work for that. But at the same time, um, I know it's favoring a lot more now of that personal touch and more like conversational tone, which I don't think chat GPT has and AI, at least right now. And it eventually probably will. But for now, I think it definitely won't replace people in those industries. Because same thing with AI images. I mean, I see that all the time too, being an author with people needing cover covers and things like that and people will mess around with it and you can 100% tell that it's AI generated and people will comment it on it because that's not like a popular thing as of right now but it may be here in the future but right now I still don't think people have I don't think people need to freak out about it quite yet about it totally replacing these different industries yeah I don't I don't think it'll ever replace them I think it'll again it's a great tool and you you know, also the piece I'll sort of leave you with is that uniqueness is, is what drives um, our interest in things. As humans, we we crave that uniqueness. So like we get 
You know, we get a dopamine hit when we see something new. And so if every book author, let's pretend we get to the point where the book covers are amazing. If they were all so similar, then you, which one would you pick? The reason why when you go into a library, you know, and this is the perfect analogy, books there, you know, oftentimes you can figure out what genre you're going to read based on the book cover, yes. but they're all over the place. And you could obviously tell romance from crime, from mystery, from horror, but they're they're very very different now certain authors have a style so you're if you're comfortable with it but between between each other that uniqueness is what is what we crave and so if we left it to ai designers you're not gonna you know all of a sudden there's no reason to pick based on the cover and same thing for writing uh with blogging now again it's a great research assistant you get that data but if if every blog post is written for every plumbing company in the entire United States about why you need XYZ pipe and that you're trying to sell or a new technique, there's no reason to pick plumber ABC versus plumber XYZ. I've noticed too, which is kind of funny when I've like posted reviews, sometimes it will spit out things that I'm like, okay, I don't like this. And I'll put like, put something similar to what I put in there. So I'll change it up a little bit and say like, okay, I need like a kinder review to this and it's just funny to see that it'll spit out the exact same thing. So I always wonder too, I'm like, okay, if other people are typing in, in the exact same thing you are, so like you just said plumbing, you wrote something about that, typed it in, said, okay, spit me out a blog post. How many other people are getting almost the similar thing as you are? Right. And so, you know, part of marketing, the the big part of marketing is to stand out through a bunch of different ways. And, and AI is going to bring us all to the middle. And so you need to have the, you know, again, going back to Olivia, you know, the training that you're doing now in, in school, in the internship with Skyline and the rest of your marketing career will help you to use this tool, but you don't want to just use it verbatim because it then you're like everybody else. And that's bad marketing. Marketing is about standing out. It's about being showcasing that you have something unique and there's a reason to pick your plumbing business versus the next one. Which essentially, they're providing the exact same service, but there's a reason why you pick one over another. And it's not just price, that's part of it, but it, it's that I feel comfortable with this, with this company. And so yeah, how you do that is with, with the design and, and with the text and all of those different things. And AI will continue to help more and more and more, but it will not replace it. So, so that's what I think. And I wish Olivia the best of luck in her career this summer and beyond, yes. because it's going to be very interesting to see what AI does. Um, it will be 100% a big part of it but it will not be all of it. So that is our, I guess, frustrated by your marketing short. Uh, we kept it to 12 minutes and 42 seconds so far. So that's nice. great. Uh, yeah. This is short as one ever. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you next week for email marketing. I know I had said that we were going to talk about that a bunch of weeks ago, but we're going to finally talk about it next week and we're going to record it right now. So be so. on the lookout. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks so much and uh, see you soon. Bye. Bye.